Remarkable human beings, incredible actors, and I'm so excited to bring them to you. Without any further ado, please welcome Jeffrey and Jensen. Jensen Ackles. <laughs>
kids get a great life with mm -hmm. almost more than Jen's and even. I have funny kids. You do have funny kids. Too. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 they, they don't need to be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other day, um, I was having uh, dinner with my family and my in-laws, and, and uh, my mother-in-law ordered a, a, a really nice um, little pour of some scotch. And Neil was like, how do you drink that, Mom? She's like, try this, this is really mild and nice and stuff. I mean, she's got a, she's like a whiskey song here. She's got the classes she can get. She teaches classes on, on whiskey, which is, you know, I mean, I love that. And, uh, <laughs> and so she slid across the table with the you know, She smells it, she's like, oh, she's got a brown hair. Uh, and so she, she, she the, the face that she made just made the entire table kind of feel like <laughs> And luckily, my father-in-law snapped the picture, so I, that's not her profile picture. <laughs> she loves me. She, <laughs> she tolerates me. Uh, but yeah, I'd say it's you know, the times at home with family, the, the, you know, being being emotionally available for some of those amazing moments that happen is uh, can, can certainly make you laugh and cry all at the same time. So, yeah, George. Uh, she has a mouth like a father, <laughs> but not at school, not around other people, just around home. But the other day, she was here to her about like arguing about something, and I hear some of the beach. <laughs> I'm like, I had to like go out. And I'm like, what? What was that? Some of the bitch. <laughs> so I got a shirt now that says some of the bitch. <laughs> Gus is a son of the bitch. <laughs> son of the bitch. Son of the bitch. Yeah, I'll never forget. Don't do that. Y'all know. All right, son of the bitch. <laughs> yes. Like this, it, the, it, the 
more comfortable you're going to be, the better the performance will be, and the better everybody else will feel about the situation. So uh, it's up to me to kind of squash that, figure myself out, and, and be comfortable with being completely naked in front of an entire crew of people. That was, so that was, that was, yeah, you could not have pulled off Soldier Boy and you know, No. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that was another thing, too. You had, like, I had to wear that kind of air of, of almost arrogance. Uh, almost. With, with the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know where that came from. I was pulled out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, being active, we try to go to a different place mentally to perform and, and play these characters and bring them to life. And, that's certainly, a, I think, a skill set that you, you need to do this job to a certain degree. Uh, and anxiety sometimes doesn't have uh, you know, room to be there, so you got to figure out a way to just deal with that. Or, you got to be. Yeah, whiskey helps. <laughs> <laughs> At six in the morning. That's an exciting thing back right there. You. Yeah, no, I'm going with you. Yeah, the hair. Awesome hair. No, right there. Yes! <laughs> Awesome hair! You don't hear that all the fucking time? <laughs> and the Ramon shirt. I should have gone out for the left Okay, thank you. Um, I couldn't like to have to apologize, but um just a fan of both of you as actors and um I know these are the super heads of positions, but is there ever an opportunity maybe for Jensen to join the walking? And so I now have, you know, we have friends that are, that are doing really well. It's like, hey, you want to come over and do a, a spot on the show? Or you want to come do this movie together or something? So there are those conversations quite a bit. But like Jeff said, it's, it, a lot of it comes down to availability and whether or not they can work that out. But um, yeah, I think any, any opportunity you and I get to, to, to go play on set together, that's, uh, that's something that We'd love out. to have it, I'll tell you that. Make it so. Make it willing to have it. it, it it's not a good ask, I don't know. Um, I'd, I'd love to make it happen. All right, let's go with my man right here. I wanted to ask, uh, with, uh, with uh, the music being such a part, part of Supernatural, um, I would say the, the rock and roll, and, um, for you guys, what was maybe your inspirational song or song that kind of motivated you, like in your teenage years and then now? Just one mm. song for me. Ooh. Um, I was a big Larry Skinner fan earlier. Uh, you know, a lot of that classic rock was, I mean, when I read this, when I read the pilot script of Supernatural, I, it was like page one. Uh, and I know somebody, you know, see this and read this, so I'm going to move it faster as uh, Kirk is writing, but it, it, it was, it was literally a big one said, uh, and then the music kicks in, and like, and it's not, uh, it's, it's like, you can take that emo pop bullshit and shove it up your ass. <laughs> this is, this is going to be some classic rock, hard rock and roll, and I was like, we got a page turner. <laughs> I mean, and, and so that was, uh, I was already, I had done that music done a lot. And like I said, it was a, a kind of a soundtrack of my teenage years. And so, um, very, uh, very excited when I got that script. And I don't know, now it's, uh, I'm, I'm certainly a lover of music, but it all depends on the mood. You know, I tend to go with what music fits, fits kind of the mood, or if I need to change my mood, I, I use performance anxiety. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be that. I'll find the music that helps with that. Um, but uh, to pick one favorite song, I think would be very wide. Next one, man. Oh, yeah. 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 O
like this morning I, I, I put on a playlist while I was, you know, in the shower, getting ready and stuff. It was, uh, there was a lot of Food Fighters and there was uh, Killers in there and it was, uh, it was that kind of style of music. But I don't know, I mean, tomorrow it might be, it might be like some jazz cafe style music. It just depends on the mood. Simple man. Simple man, there you go. There you go. What about you? Just, I'll say, you know, I mean, I grew up a little teeny record player, and I remember like, the first album, first album I ever remember really like listening to every fucking word and memorizing was Led Zeppelin. Uh, Woo! Woo! And he must have been, I was knee high to a grasshopper, but I mean, and I still listen to the same music that I did when I was knee high to a grasshopper. I, my playlist hasn't changed in 57 years. <laughs> But no Harry Styles. <laughs> no, I mean my kids will like you know, Gus will be like, man, you know, this band, I'm like, no, dude. Not even a little bit. No, it's not even music. <laughs> what is that? Um, and my kids, my kids both love like seven and rock because of that, which I adore. You know, Gus wears his, you know, scary to have a shirt or whatever it may be. And I'm like, that's a boy. It, oh, no, I don't think it will. No, no, no. I won't wear it. <laughs> JJ wears a Metallica sweatshirt to school. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's his first concert for the so Metallica. Yeah. I put, I had an arrow in the back seat the other day. It was, I, I forget what, it was just her and I, but um, well, we were cruising, and she's like, Dad, can we hear some music? And I was like, sure. And uh, Inner Sandman was on, and I just cranked it. And I looked at the back, and she was just like, <laughs> Dad, are they talking about bad dreams? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you dare, bro. Right? Yeah, monster under your bed. <laughs> in your closet. During COVID, uh, I used to take George with me wherever I went, but I, I, I remember I just got the, this new Hellcat Challenger, and George was the only one that would ever ride with me, and she liked going fast. But we were delivering masks to local hospitals that my wife was making. Uh, and we would, I'd be like, you want to listen to like Frozen? I'm like, oh, I'll do it if I have to. She'd be like, no, and we would listen to rock and roll. She'd just be back there, bang, bang. <laughs> and she's that kid. It's great. Yeah, it's all great. It's awesome. But Gus's first concert was Metallica. And I remember his eyes were really spit. Central Park Metallica concert. Nice. It was awesome. And Hillary and I took him, and he was just like, he just changed his life. Yeah. Man, that's <laughs> awesome. Man. Yeah. Alright, go ahead. Ooh. Chicken! <laughs> nice. Did you bring that just for this? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> using props. We're using props up here. <laughs> similar subject about uh, when someone does wrong and, and the, the anger that doesn't allow you to uh, forgive that person. And he said that, that that's still so, if, if you're the person that felt wrong and you're upset and you harbor something about it, then the person that did you wrong still has control over you. Because they're still making you feel something that you don't want to feel. So for the person who was upset, it's about letting that go and not letting that person affect you like that and control you as much. He even said he, that, that not letting the person be your master. Um, and it might be if, if you forgive yourself and if you have, have tried to make amends and if you have asked for forgiveness, then it really, it really lies with them whether or not they're going to, to, to let that go. It's, 
it's hard. You can only do what you can do, and it's it, it's up to the other person to kind of uh, allow that forgiveness to, to, to come in and uh, accept it. Yeah. So keep trying. You know, if it means it's, if it's something that means that much to you, it's a relationship that means that much to you, which it sounds like it is. Then, then just keep doing everything you can until they come around. I think the best thing is to always be gentle. If you can be gentle, yeah. and and to have it, they will have. It puts them in a position they have to listen, right? Um, or, or they don't, and that's, that's an easy one. Um, but if you're genuine, if you come from a real place, I, I, more often than not, these people that were close to you then will be close to you again. Um, good luck. Yeah. Nice tip. <laughs> um, all right, right here we are. Yes. I want to know what's a guilty pleasure that you started during COVID, like Vanderpump Rules? <laughs> 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 you want to switch it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking scandal. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> one that you kept and one that maybe you gave up. I haven't given it up. <laughs> <laughs> And so now they all have the podcasts, I think. Everybody on our show has the individual podcasts. And I keep getting these calls like, yeah, somebody's asking me to be on the podcast. We don't know who they are. My agents are like so clueless. I'm like, how do you not know? <laughs> Two, I can't do it because this is a secret. No one's supposed to know it. Anymore. <laughs> You're up. Started shooting 
Roman candles at each other and then popping bottle rockets, like firing at each other and like and then like you know, one of these was like a, a where you shoot it and then it lands and then it explodes. I mean, it was like, it was like yeah, it was like we were just you know trying to kill each other for no for fun. For fun. We had a guy team wolf the top of it, like driving down the road, and he climbed out the, the he took off the, uh, you know, the vent thing, and he climbed out the hole, and was just like, <laughs> that's not okay, that's, that guy was Jensen. <laughs> remember that, remember we used the term that guy? <laughs> Asking for a friend? <laughs> I remember my first, I don't know why I remember this so well, but I remember uh, moving to LA uh, and we drove my friend Billy Burke, uh, who was on that show, Fire Woo! Yeah. Uh, and Charlie's uh, Twilight. Twilight. Twilight, that's it. So <laughs> he had a first. <laughs> what? No joke. Uh, he was in a band called Billy Black and something, but you know. Like dead stuff. And so he drove, that was, that was his car, it was a hearse. And we drove this hearse from Seattle to Los Angeles. And I mean, we didn't have firework wars, but I think there was people like riding on top of the hearse and shit. Um, but I do remember it really well. And I remember it was because Billy and I both are still standing today. And um, we kind of had a career, so yay. <laughs> that was a good road. Jared and I used to uh, road trip. Every every year to up to Vancouver for the before, oh you were driving before and after the season yeah so we would we would he would hop in his his truck and I hop in mine and we would take off you know a week before filming started and we drive all the way up you know take five and take you just follow each other and yeah you walkie talkie you yeah, walkie talkie <laughs> yeah. you know be cruising along and. and what a great way to like, you know, bomb. Hey, let's pull over and have a firework bar. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, uh, I'd go for a little beef jerky, you know? <laughs> Some sunflower seeds, um, which is road trip necessities. And, uh, and so we did that for, gosh, like several, several seasons, probably like five years in a row, we, we would drive up, and then at the end of the season, we'd drive our truck back. And then, uh, and then I think by that time, we'd, we'd had just enough coin, we could leave the, we could leave our trucks there. And so there you go. Home and had a good car. So that's smart. Yeah, yeah. So we, it's okay on the way there. On the way home, though, it's like, oh, this is a long time. Oh, oh, I need to get home. Well, no, it was just the end of the season, so we were like, woo hoo, hoo we're leaving it in our trucks. I've been there for nine months. Time to get back to life. Um, but uh, those were. Those was that from Texas or did you live? No, we were in Florida. Yeah, yeah. 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 So first couple of years. Yeah, first few years. Yeah. So. All right, I think that's it, right? We gotta get, we gotta get going. We gotta start our day. We got a lot to do today. I mean, not that this wasn't starting our day. Yeah. Thank you all for being here.